guys, this episode we're gonna be talking about testing the Rails authentication generator. So the authentication generator creates a module and a user and session model so that you can add authentication to your application. So here we have a um, application that we build in the Learn Hotwire course, and we're gonna be adding tests to log in the user and visit their profile in this lesson. So we need to be able to visit the uh, profile edit page and be redirected back here, but when we're logged in, we can go to the profile page. So I'm gonna talk about how we can use the new session um, test helper module that's included in Rails main and will be included in the next Rails release. This is the pull request for it, and it adds the session test helper, and basically this is a little module that will be included in your application, and you can reference this to pull it into your apps today if you would like as well, and that's what I have done. So here's the module, session test helper, two methods, sign in as a user, and this, um, and sign out of course. Sign in as is going to then create a user session to log them in. The session is going to have an ID, which is going to be added to the cookie jar um, and to the cookies for the request. So whenever we want to write a test for this, it will go ahead and assign the cookie in integration tests and log us in. Um, so we can write that out here. So let's generate an integration test for the user. And we'll open that up and you'll see a bunch of other code here for the Learn Hotwire course, um, but you can ignore that. We just have it already set up here. So we can say um, guests cannot edit their profile and we can um, make a request to get edit profile path, and we'll expect this to redirect us. So if we are logged out and we visit profile edit, it should redirect us to new session path. Or cert redirected to new session path. So let's run the test for that, and we should see that that succeeds, and it does, and that's great. Then we can say, um, logged in or signed in users can edit their profile and we will do this except we will assert response success and um, in this case we will say sign in as users one which is a fixture that I have and we will run this test and it will pass um, and that is great. So if we comment this out and we run this test again it will fail or it should fail, two assertions. All right, let's try this one more time though. Test, integration, user test, three assertions. Maybe this wasn't running the right thing there. Not quite sure, but here we go. Let's try that um, and we get an error because we are redirected. So we can confirm that works correctly. Not sure this button was running the correct test there. That's okay. Um, so this works great for our tests in integration tests and controller tests because we have access to cookies directly here. And if we look up the test helper, this is going to add the test helper session test helper. Um, that's going to be included in active support test case and give us access to those methods anywhere. But if we were to run bin rails generate system test, for users, we'll have a users system test under system users test. Then um, in this case, we want to use the same thing. So we'll do a system test where it will open up the browser and actually do the same things. Um, and rather than our user test over here doing a get uh, to those, we actually need to use uh, visit. So we'll say visit edit profile URL because we're in a real browser. So we'll say guest cannot edit their profile. And then test user can edit their profile. In this case, we will say sign in as users one visit edit profile URL and uh, this one, when, um, when you're here, we can check to see 
you know, that the current URL uh, or the current page has the word login on it. So we can say, say assert selector H1 with the text of login. So let's run that test. We'll say bin rails test, test system, users test, and we'll run test on line four. This will open the browser. And um, if we want, we can also go to application system test case. I've already set this up so that we can override the driver so it's not headless Chrome. If we want to um, put it like a binding IRB in here and poke around in the browser. So we can say driver equals Chrome bin rails test test system users test line four. So we should see Chrome open up here and attempt to log or attempt to visit that page and then be redirected here. And then it's gonna look for that login H1 on the page and uh, that is correct. So we are good with that one, but let's now run line 10. So this one's going to open up um, the, or try to open up the same URL, but after being logged in. However, we get an undefined local variable or method cookies for an instance of users test. So in this session test helper, we are setting cookies directly, and that's not something that's available in system tests because these are running in a real browser instead of making an HTTP request um, or sending a fake request directly to Rails. So the cookies helper is not valid here. So what we can do here is we can say application is a, or if we are inside of an application system test case, we can make another uh, method of doing this. So one of the things that we do have to do um, is before we can inject cookies into the browser, we need to load a URL. So we need to say visit um, new session URL unless the page current URL start with uh, HTTP. So this is basically telling the browser, hey, that blank page that you start at, let's go to the application so that we can actually set cookies directly from our test. And this is going to work very similar to assigning a cookie directly here, but we can do that from um, the Capybara page method here. So in order to do that, we have to already be on the application on localhost uh, to reference that. Then we can use the page driver to basically get down into Chrome um, and directly access the browser. So remember, Capybara can use Selenium or Cuprite or whatever. So this is saying, hey, give me the driver, then access the browser, and then use the manage interface to add a cookie and the name is going to be session ID, just like we have here um, in the cookie jar. And then we can set the value to cookie jar session ID. Um, and then we want same site is lax and we can set HTTP only to true so that uh, JavaScript cannot access that um, and that keeps our cookie from being stolen uh, by malicious JavaScript on the page. All right, so let's run this one more time, and this should now take this branch because it knows we're in a system test case, and then visit the URL if we haven't already done that in one of our tests, then we can assign the cookie there. So that allows us to use the same helper for that same situation, and this is also useful because Normally, in system tests, you might write something that visits the new session URL, fills in the email address, fills in the password, then clicks the submit button, and then visits the page that you were trying to test. And so this gets around a little bit of that by saying, let's load a page for the Rails application first, then let's just inject the cookie, and we don't have to type into that form field or the password form field, click the submit button and submit the request. We can actually load the page, inject a cookie, then jump right to what our test is trying to do. In this case, visit the edit profile URL. And here we can then put a binding IRB in afterwards and see that yes, we are logged in and we are now on the profile page. And so our selector here could end up uh, being a similar test as the other one where we're looking for an H1 with the word profile in it 
on the page. So let's do that. Let's close this out and we will add assert selector h1 with the text of profile. And that will ensure that we are on the correct page. And this time around, we can do this in Chrome, but let's go back to headless Chrome, which doesn't need to actually render anything out and just boots up the browser, executes those tests, and we are good to go. And that is it. Um, so this is something upcoming in Rails 8.1 or whatever the next release is, 9.0, I don't know. We should probably see this uh, sometime between now and Rails World in September, I would assume. Um, and hopefully, this is a pull request that I added. Um, so hopefully we will see this in uh, the future. So I made a pull request to this here. I don't know if it's the best solution for it. Um, this stuff, I was trying to keep simple so we didn't have to add a special method for it just for system tests. Um, and we could use the same implementation for that for the most part. Just the way the cookies are assigned is a little different. So maybe these two um, conditions will be pulled out into their own methods. That probably makes sense. It probably needs a little refactoring, but I wanted to just implement this and get the discussion started of, does this make sense? Because I think if you run the authentication generator, it makes sense that the test helpers work in both integration tests and system tests. So this is a pull request I just thought would be interesting to talk about. Um, the solution here is actually thanks to Lewis Buckley from 37 Signals. He wrote about this a couple years back um, and was talking about, you know, like I mentioned, typically you have to fill in the email and password and then click the submit button. And then this is a way to do this faster by just directly assigning the cookie in the browser. Uh, and they saw a 25% reduction in runtime for their test suite, which is pretty awesome. Now I know they've talked about uh, getting rid of their system tests at 37 signals for a lot of things, but this can still be useful if like me, you are working on an application that needs to test some JavaScript, this can be useful um, to have the system test still and uh, ensure that your stimulus controllers or your hotwire integration for turbo frames works. I just finished recording seven lessons on testing infinite scroll turbo frames, drag and drop stimulus controllers, uh, and a whole bunch of other things like turbo streams and broadcasts in the Learn Hotwire course. So if that sounds interesting and you want to dive deep into um, Hotwire, you can at learnhotwire.com. This is our massive curriculum. Uh, and down here is our testing Hotwire section. Probably changed the names of these a little bit, but we talked about testing turbo stream responses, turbo frames, and broadcasts with integration tests as well as our system tests for various things in our app that we build. So anyways, I thought this was a pretty useful thing to know. I've been um, pulling in the existing session test helper into all of my applications that are using the Rails authentication generator. And I think this is a very, very welcome improvement and hopefully this as well to make it support system tests too before release. So that is it. Uh, I thought this would be fun. If you like seeing more Rails uh, open source pull requests or whatever, let me know and we'll dive into more of these in the future.